Youtubers, how's it going? Mike Martins here, Mike Martins channel. Welcome to another very special edition of Trends in the Housing Market. Today is May 28th, 2017, and I would like to welcome everyone to my show. And like I said, housing is the number one talked about um, subject everywhere you go. In every English-speaking country, everyone's taught every free market country basically has a free market or a really corrupt government that basically sells their country out to the highest bidder is basically struggling right now with affordability and the proper citizens citizens of the country are having a really hard time making it. You know what I'm saying? Anyways. I got some really action-packed stories for you guys, broadcasting out of Merritt, B.C., country music capital of Canada. And uh, let's start with, um, I got an article here I want to read to you guys. It's a really good one. The Commune, a movie for Seattle's housing crisis. I don't know if you guys remember back in a few shows, I kept telling you guys how, basically, the sweep or the investors, or the wave was going to head south to Seattle. And it's on record. You could see the video before it even happened. And it headed east towards Toronto. It's not that I predicted this stuff. It's uh, basically um, the trend that was going to happen. So if you're following the housing trend, you're following what's happening with the with 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 housing. And a lot of people have gotten into understanding the housing markets understanding the where the markets are headed where the markets are going and everyone says everyone that doesn't own is saying the same thing that it's going to crash everyone that does own is saying the same thing it won't crash so it's like a double a double-edged sword it's basically people tug of warring with each other yes and then people are telling me i'm out of my mind i'm out of my mind the market can never crash why would the government allow it to you know what i'm saying so i could see that I could see the government not allowing the market to crash. I could see that because the housing markets was propping the housing markets propping the economy. So, yeah. So, anyways, the commune, a movie for Seattle's housing crisis. It's from today's date or yesterday's date. Sorry, Danish director Thomas Vanderberg made his rep in 1998 celebration in which he a well healed family unravels a spectacular fashion. The Commune is a sexier, more relaxed picture. Vinterberg, who lived in a Copenhagen commune for 12 years, remains concert, uh, concerned sorry, with, the way, with the ways people deconstruct family for more even relax. Take Scandinavian communes of the 1970 Lucas Modus, Modusins together is the film to beat. Experiment of group begins during the visit of architect professor Eric Muller, hometown wife Anna. So I'm not going to go into the thing. Basically, it hedge it says right here, Seattle, our movie, a commune will give you some idea on how to live in a effing expensive city. So basically, it goes into oh, there's some famous actors in this thing. Wow. Okay. But it goes into basically what it costs or what it is to uh steve the plumbers online people how you doing bud thanks for joining me commune don't forget to watch it now i saw this article i think it's pretty interesting it's almost bringing people together the housing crisis is bringing people together read what it says here millennials ponder living with elderly as a solution to Vancouver's housing crisis. It's just one of those ideas suggested during the event organized by City Hive, an organization devoted to involving young people in city building. Yeah. Yeah. What do you guys think? I mean, it's nice that uh, the young people are getting together. Young Vancouverites brainstorm solutions for the city's unaffordable Housing problem during an event organized by City Hive. For months, a group of young Vancouverites have been getting creative about Vancouver's dire housing problem, and they're ready to share their idea at an event on Wednesday. We've been hosting a pop-up think and, and do tank for 30 people under 30 
to really engage and figure out how they can take action and build solutions in their communities, said Tezeki Turongo. Oh, that's Italian. A 23-year-old Vancouver consultant who confounded who co-founded an organization called City High. Vancouver's mayor, Greg Robertson, will speak at the event. So now, I hope they speak at the event and bring up the, I don't know, 30, 40, 50,000 empty homes. I mean, they have to bring up these empty home, uh, the empty homes in these discussions because if there's empty homes then there's places obviously vacant places for people to live and sleep i don't know i mean it's like you know a pea lives in a pod you know or turtle has its shell i'm just you know if there's a place you know you just i don't know um so the article is interesting and it basically uh they're offering Five thousand prize a project that gets most voted on Wednesday's event, and the six teams plan to continue to work their idea with one of the event's sponsor with the hope making it to work in real world. But I don't understand why it's getting to this because Canada's population is dipping big time. Because the Canadian proper can't have kids anymore. The Canadian proper can't afford to have kids, especially when both people are working. Both people can't take time off work to have a kid. And then when they have a kid, it's too expensive to, to maintain the kid. So this is the problem. Uh, the government's looking at this problem. It, it's a big problem. This is, not, this is not good. We have a declining uh, birth rate. And I know, I know for, for, I know for, for good from some information that was given to me and I looked it up uh, Italy's uh, death rate is higher than its birth rate there's more people dying in Italy than there are being born and that's a, that's a problem this is a big problem so I want to discuss this because they're not going to the root of the problem they're massaging the problem by finding ways to put some gravy on the, on the, on the mashed potatoes you know what i'm saying but not targeting the problem and voicing the opinion and actually asking the banks to do their jobs properly so the government doesn't have to intervene so it's 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 a disaster it's a fiasco it's a it's a gong show next this is a good some good news for people living out east. If you're out east in Toronto, um, but not for people living in New York. I'm sorry. Uh, let me see if I can get this to go to the right. I can't. It won't let me go to the right. Yeah, it won't let me. All right. Let me see if I can get it to center like that. Yeah, but it's too small. I can't even read it. Too bad. You can look up the article. GTA GTA Homes. Home sales plunge as much as 61%. Woo! Let me get some water here. I'm on fire. GTA home sales plunge as much as 61%. So let's see what people are saying. There's a lot of comments here. So people comment below. Steve the Plumber, Google this article, Mike Martins, and who am I? Toronto bidding wars turn to home buyers' remorse. Market gets nervous. Nice. Okay, guys. Let me see if I can find that article. I'll get into it in a second. I have it's really hard for me to um to look up articles while I'm going live. It's really tough. You guys could go on Instagram, go to the top of my page, you'll see me on Instagram. Just message me on Instagram. I accept messages on Instagram from everybody, okay? It's no it's no big deal. But anyways, GTA home sales plunge as much as 61%. I just had to repeat myself in case your ears didn't believe what I said. Toronto uh, region ground level home sales dropped 26% overall between April 20th 
and May 20th in a month to, uh, to one real estate broker. Okay, that's the same thing. Let's keep going. A stomach-crunching drop of 61% in the number of home sales in some municipalities around Toronto could translate to a single-digit decline in regional prices by the end of the month. That's huge, people. Like, if this was, if this was in the, in the, because I'm, I'm very familiar with the stock market. I'm very familiar with trading stocks and stuff. If this was in the stock market. People, there'd be a huge sell-off. There would be a runoff in the markets. There'll be a huge runoff. This this would cause a huge mass ca- mass ca- mass chaos effect. I don't know if that's a video game, but it would cause a mass effect here, and it would cause a lot of problems. You know what I'm saying? Oh wow. Okay, so Steve the plumber is telling me something here in the art. So this is what he's saying. Royal Page Broker actually made comments. She said in the article that people are walking away from deposits and don't want to close anymore. That happened when I was in South Florida. People had deposits on pre-built units. They had deposits on pre-builts. And they didn't even break ground. And then the market started to go bad. I know a guy... Hear me, just hear me out on this story. This is really good. I know a guy who sold his spot, his pre-built in line to build. There was a a pre-built going up in um, in the Fort Lauderdale area, nice area. And he bought a pre-built unit. uh, I think it was for one hundred and ninety thousand. It was a three bedroom, uh, three bedroom, two bath uh, townhouse with a pool in the middle community pool, right? And he sold his pre-built, basically the $5,000 deposit he put down, plus $30,000 on top. He sold it to a lady that really wanted the unit. Two weeks after he sold his place, like he, he went to the, the real estate company, contacted the builder and let him know. They recontracted it. She paid him the check. He was laughing. A month later, or two months later, the, the market just tanked. So there's all these people with these pre-built units, and it's it's horrible. You see where I'm going here? Anyways, it's hot, people. It's hot. It's hot. I might have to go bald today, man. Anyways, so meantime, a data uh, tracking brokerage, condos.ca, showing the prices per square foot are down nearly 1% in the, in the last 60 days on its rolling 60-day average. A nervousness has crept and it seems to be taking hold quite quickly, said Andrew Harreli, vice president of condos.ca. The philosophy analysis shows York Region, which has seen higher level investment buying, having the most significant drop in the number of resale home transactions, 61% in Richmond Hill, 46% in Markham, 44% in Newmarket. Wow. And I heard today that Cambridge, Ontario, I think it was Cambridge, Ontario. Yeah, it was Cambridge, Ontario, uh, saw a drop of 67 or 70 percent. Anyways, let's move on, my people. So someone's asking me again, Steve Plummer, we're walking away from deals and uh, the article will blow your mind. Okay, let's find this article, people. Uh, okay, let's find this article here. I'm just trying to see. Steve, can you just, uh, if you don't mind, in the in the comments now, just go ahead and write a comment. Just like write the full title of the article, and I'll look it up. Okay, no dates, nothing. Just to write. Just tell me uh, what. Uh, yeah, just write the name of the article, and I'll look it up here for you guys. Now, remember what I was talking about, how, I don't know, it was four or five months ago, if you guys have been following me for the last couple of couple of years, if you follow me a few months back, you would know that I've been talking about Calgary is the, the cheapest but yet best bang for your buck. Now, this article just shows up, pow, in the kisser. Is Calgary the next property hotspot for foreign buyers? As BC and Ontario slap taxes on non-resident buyers, Alberta has a message, come on over! 
Woo! Let me get some water here. You think they actually care about propping their economy with oil, mining, um, creating things, fabricating, exporting? No. Come on over. Price everybody out. Okay, okay. I found the article here. It's been in the comments for a while. Let me go to opening new page here at the end. Let me paste this here for you guys. Let's see if we could find it. Here we go. All right. We'll bring the, put this one to the top of the list. Come on, hurry up. Toronto bidding war wars turn to home buyers remorse as market gets nervous. All right. This one is from Steve the Plumber. Toronto's hot housing market has entered a new phase jittery after a double whammy of government intervention and a near a near collapse of home capital group inc which was bailed out like let's not forget by pensioners okay by pensioners uh sellers are rushing to list their homes to avoid missing out on the recent price gains the new dynamic has buyers rethinking purchases and sellers asking why they aren't attracting the bidders the bidding wars their neighbors saw just a few weeks ago in canada's largest city we are seeing people who paid those crazy prices over the last few months walking away from their deposits that happened in south florida i remember that day too said carissa Turbul, the Royal Page broker in the Toronto suburb of Oakville, who didn't get a single visitor to an open house on the weekend. They don't want to close anymore. Mm. Home capital may be achieving what so many policy measures failed to do. Cool down a housing market that soared as much as 33% in March from a year earlier. The run on deposits at the Toronto-based mortgage lender has sparked concerns about contagion and comes on top of new Ontario tax on foreign buyers and federal government moves last year that make it harder to get a mortgage. Definitely, uh... Whoa, 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 whoa. You don't flag my video. Whoa, what's, what's going on here? Nobody cares. Whoa, whoa, nobody cares. Designed here, made. Yeah, nobody cares. Anyways, definitely a perception change occurred from Home Capital, said Shubaha Das Gubata, the owner of Toronto based mortgage brokerage capital lending center. It's hard, a certain impact, but how to quantify the impact is yet to be determined. Early data from the Toronto Real Estate Board confirms that a shift in sentiment listing soared 47% the first two weeks of the month before prior of the year earlier until sales dropped 16%. This was a few articles I read for you guys two week, a week and a half, two weeks ago. Full month data will be released early June. Prices moderate. Confidence wanes. Market fear. Rental time. Still, not all sellers are feeling pinched. Michael Hartman put his North Toronto home up for sale on May 17 and sold it on May 22nd, the first day he began taking offers. The 53-year-old professor at McMaster University, De Grote School of Business in Hamilton, Ontario, decided not to take his agent's advice to price the house on the low side in an attempt to stir up a bidding war. He nudged the price up to be more in line with other homes in the neighborhood and sold it for $1.65 million, 10000 above asking price. Hartman said that he and his wife will take their time before choosing their next move. We are in a fortunate position as empty nesters that we don't, so basically their kids moved on. We don't have to rush back into the market, he said. We have an advantage of seeing whether we go back in and buy in Toronto or somewhere else in Canada or go abroad. In the meantime, they pay, plan to pay rent. So, that's the article, Steve the Plumber. I hope you're happy. And so, back to this. So, 
is Calgary the next property hotspot for foreign buyers? And I've been talking about this, guys. I don't know if you remember the article I was reading about how Cal Alberta is the best bang for your buck and there's no low restrictions. And I love it how the, the, uh, the, the Alberta has a message. Come on over. Just leave all these homes empty. Don't worry about it. And then there's a boom in Alberta and there's nowhere for people to live. Go figure. I bet you if Alberta, and I, I, this is on record, just like everything I've been saying for the last, for the last, I don't know, for the last year, couple of years. Watch there. Watch this. In Alberta, in, in, in Alberta, in, in, um, watch them fuel the housing market there, sky high, and then watch there be some boom in oil or some boom in something, and it's got to be through that province, and no one could afford to live there. And then it becomes a huge mess because the, the country really needs to export. The country is in dire need to produce and export. And once you have nowhere to live and something happens in one of these cities that are so that is so dependent on oil, watch out. Okay, somebody said something that they're going crazy here on the uh, Mia J. My mortgage specialist friend told me there are many mortgage uh, mortgages defaulting in the last couple of months and banks are now being more uh, strict uh, going forward. Yeah, but there was a lot of garbage put on the books, right? So the, the problem is there was so much garbage put on the books that the I could see banks bringing in head, un, head underwriters to come in and start reviewing all the deals that were approved. I could see a lot of people losing their jobs. I could see a lot of people in the upper positions losing their jobs. And that's what happens when you have goals to set. When you have goals to set and you have um a monthly goal that you have to hit you get to feel the pressure right anyways let's go alberta's for uh fortunes and calgary in particular could soon change or at least that's what the real estate industry is hoping why would they hope for something like this for that people can't afford to live what what's what's you know what i'm saying like now that non-residents who buy homes in Vancouver and Toronto are faced with the 50% tax, I don't think that foreign investors who want to invest in Canada will shift to Calgary, lured by the most attractive returns in the country, Buss says. Alberta is still crawling its way back to economic health after the steep downturn. And as a result, property prices are cheap compared to other regions. And unlike Toronto and Vancouver, where foreign investment is viewed by some as a uh, Malevent force driving up home prices. The market in the province is still shaky, and a few more offshore buyers could be beneficial. They'd actually be welcomed here in Alberta, says Todd Hirsch, chief economist at ATB Financial. This is this is horrible. So there's an oil price. Uh, so oil price crashes. This is a long article, people. <sighs> So there's a, a crash in oil. So the only way they could fix fix it is by, by pinning it in the housing market. You can't use housing as a commodity. It can't be traded. like, like a, People are trading it like a commodity, but it's not that. <sighs> okay, let's see what we got here. Wow, there's so many comments coming in right now, guys. Thanks for commenting and uh, adding your uh, feedback here. So it says, your online searches don't always translate into sales, of course. And some in the real estate are skeptical foreign buyers will turn up in a big way. Brad Henderson, CEO of South Bets Internationally Realty Canada, said foreign buyers who are purely financially motivated are likely to consider Alberta, but that's a small portion of an already small portion of demand by his estimation some of them are investing to get their money outside of conflict areas and some of them may in fact want to immigrate here he says so good article very long though 
let's continue here. Leave me alone. Okay. Whew. So they're feeling it in Los Angeles. I'm wondering if my friend from LA is watching this. From LA counting. From LA County complaining about the housing prices and blah blah blah. It's like I just started watching your show. I know you've been doing this, Mike, for ages, but California's out of control for housing prices. Yeah, anything on the West Coast pretty much is is doomed. Okay. Let's continue here. Editorial. To end the housing crisis, California leaders can't be afraid to put all options on the table. So California is being, it's being hit. It's being hit for a while, actually. What am I talking about? San Francisco, Silicon Valley, uh, San Jose. Everywhere has been being hit. But now, I guess now they're addressing it. How do you know California's housing problem has hit crisis proportions? When state lawmakers introduce more than 130 bills to fix it. 130 bills. Holy crap. They just put two, three things in, 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 in Vancouver, like this and the vacant tax. 130 bills. The state's housing market has long been unaffordable for too many Californians. That's why the California brain drain. They're trying to make those commercials again. Come to California. We need you. Come to California. It's a great place to live. Everyone's leaving California. Look at Walking Journey in his channel. If you look at Walking Journey, you'll see... He left the state of California in his channel and he is making a series about how to leave California. And it's, yeah, he's going to teach people how to leave California, what to do, how to plan, how to look ahead. It's, it's very important. So this is how bad it's getting. There's a market for people to learn how to leave the state. The state's housing market has been a lot of okay, well, okay, okay, let's continue here. Uh, a staggering percentage of their take-home pay to keep a roof over their heads. Financial advisors recommend spending no more than 30% of your income on housing. That's very true. But one in three renters in California pays more than half their income to their landlord. Plus, the greatest job growth has been in coastal cities that have the highest housing costs, forcing workers to pay more than they can afford. Commute long distances or forego career opportunities because the cost of living is too high. The crisis may not, may not be visible in the growth of tents and RVs clustered along the city streets. As homelessness has risen in California in recent years, even as it has declined elsewhere in the nation. At the heart of California's well, because everyone left and bought somewhere else and they're not homeless anymore. <laughs> At the heart of California's housing crisis is a, is a mathematical problem. There are simply not enough homes for the state's population. Housing construction has failed to keep up with demand since 1980s. And the problem has only worsened in recent years over the last decade. This is huge. California has built about 80,000 homes annually and about 100,000 homes a year short of what was needed. Okay, so could somebody... If you guys, if somebody um, want to leave uh, in the comments section there, if you don't mind, I would like to know uh, how many empty homes are in California. So if anyone could leave that in the comments section, I would be very happy. I would like to know how many empty homes are in California due to investments, investing purposes. Let's fly over to Sydney. Sydney, 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 Sydney. Is the housing boom over? Just one bidder showing up at Sydney auctions as the top agent warns the property market has finally... What does that say there? I can't say. Finally... This Facebook crap's in the way. I can't see it. Anyway, Steve the Plumber, if you're still watching, bud, here you go. One bidder showing up in Sydney. So it looks like all the Commonwealth, it looks like, it's, looks like it might come under... A collapse. Prospective Sydney homeowners can breathe a sigh of relief with the top real estate expert claiming the five-year housing boom is coming to an end. 
Alleluia. Alleluia. The plateau will be welcomed by first home buyers and even real estate agents after five years of price rising for homes in Sydney and Melbourne. The dip in prices is supported by surge in housing construction, a cap on foreign spending, and tightening the investor lending. Wow, so Australia is really doing something about this for real. It's not like Calgary. Come on over! You know, or Alberta. Sorry, I'm not picking on Calgarians. Um, no, I'm picking on Calgarians. I'm saying Albertans. Come on over, buy our homes. You know what I'm saying? The Real Estate Institute of New South uh, New South Wales, sorry, President John Cunningham, I, I wonder if he's related to Richie Cunningham, told the Daily Telegraph he believed the market would remain flat for the rest of the year, with agents often seeing auctions with only one bidder. Imagine you're at an auction with one, you're just the one bidder and you, you look around and and you're like, can we start the bidding at a dollar? I don't know if you, anyone watched that episode of The Simpsons when Bart bought a factory. Anyways, not going off topic. I think prices have just caught up with buyers. Affordability can't be pushed over anymore. And some of the crazy results has put so much needed caution creeping into buyer sentiment, he told the paper. The predicted plateau has also be helped by 50% cap on foreign investors buying apartments and building and a ghost tax for foreign investors who leave their properties empty, introduced by the federal budget in May. So that's what's happening. They're, they're, they're putting these measures into place because they want to start looking out for the Australian proper because the Australian proper is, is toast. Australian proper is toast. Anyways. Hey, look at this guy. Treasurer Scott Morris said the answer to balancing the market would be supply. So maybe they're right, you know. And the cap. The five-year-old housing boom saw prices increase 75% to the medium house price of 915 large. That's a lot of money, folks. That's almost a million dollars. So good news coming out of Australia. So my friends down under... Comment, comment in the comment section. Let me know if this is really happening or is this just article there to massage the people to make them feel, um, you know, to make them feel good. New Zealand. Softly, softly in the face of New Zealand's housing crisis. Budget 2017 made incremental steps to addressing the New Zealand's housing crisis. The budget may not be the best place for it, but there's clearly no ambitious plan to fix it. The measures are ambulance at the bottom of the cliff stuff. So New Zealand is one place in the Commonwealth that does not have anything in place to protect its um, proper citizens. The budget announced a boost accommodation supplement and already announced increases in the housing building by Housing New Zealand. Infrastructure spending and hits of public-private partnership to accelerate infrastructure investment. These changes are, are very welcome. The main criticism is that these in, 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 innovates, innovates, I don't know, I'm out, I'm out of it right now. I'm sun drunk, sun drunk today. Initiatives. Whew. God, I got to learn how to read. Luckily, I didn't invest in a bubble. <laughs> Anyways, these initiatives are too timid and gradual. The increase in the accommodation supplement is welcome relief for families battling rising uh, recent costs of living, but with not enough houses and not enough social houses. The demand for accommodation supplement will keep rising, as will rents. Stephen Joyce admitted about 100,000 people will still be under housing stress. 100,000 people? So under housing stress. Even after the increase of accommodation supplement. Let's not get even started with outdated rental regulation, which makes renting uh, precarious living arrangements. Precarious. Holy crap. These words. I don't even use these words. Increase in the state of housing building program will not 
How's everyone needing this uh, needing state house at the end of the program? The stock. Okay. Okay. I'm done with this article. People, if this wasn't, if housing was affordable, then people would buy their houses. They don't have to depend on government housing. So now people are working or not working or or their dream now is to be in some sort of government housing. This is not what people should set goals for. This is not people should be, you know, living that dream, going out and really things wouldn't be like this. If Okay, basically what I'm trying to say is none of this would be like this today if if there wasn't, I don't know, half the country, half the country with empty homes. If half the country was in empty homes and it was uh, foreign invested, these people would have homes. They would have uh, building equity slowly over time like a normal rate they would have jobs locally because they wouldn't have to commute so far and it wouldn't be a nightmare to find housing so what i'm trying to say is if half the houses in the country weren't empty new zealand wouldn't be in this problem period where people have to fight over government housing or depend on government housing to live you know okay so major collapse in housing is going to discourage them so the um Lots of comments going on. Thank you very much, people, for your commenting and your input. So this is this is this article is it's interesting, but if they weren't in this predicament from the start, everyone would have their house basically, and everyone that can't afford to buy would buy because the people that can't afford to buy are people that would qualify five years ago in a heartbeat because they have the down payment, they have good credits, they have everything, but now they're bought out of the market. So what do they have to do? Depend on government housing. That's that's disgusting. UK house building hits level. So US UK house building hits its level since 2008 financial crisis, but demand still outstrips supply. So the UK is in a little bit of a, a little bit of a pickle here, eh? The number of houses built in England has hit its highest in almost a decade, according to the new government figures. A total of 162,880 homes were started in 2016-2017, uh, with 147,960 completed by the Department of Communities and local the local government said. Both figures are at the highest since 2007-2008, when the credit crunch began, causing the construction industry to almost grind to a halt. Housing starts in England were estimated at 43,170 in January, March 3rd, 3% higher than in the previous three months and 21% higher than a year ago. Comple uh, completions hit 39,520, which was 9% higher than the quarter before, 21% higher than a year ago. Despite the positive figures, House building is still well below the level needed to keep up with the rising demand and population rises, experts have warned. Okay, just like California. What population rising? When there's 200,000 empty homes in the UK, what population rising? When the, uh, the British proper or the English proper can't even afford to have one kid. Could someone... Please comment here on the right, well, on the right side, well, on my right side. Can you please comment what population growth when they can't even afford to have kids? How are they going to buy a house? So there's not enough housing being built. That's what they're saying here in the UK. Irish Examiner, let's head off to Ireland now. Housing crisis, fury as families sleep in Grada stations. Garada stations. 12 homeless families in the Grada stations on Tuesday night was completely unacceptable. So this is like families. And I could bet you that a lot of those people work too. A lot of those people work every day. Miss Fitzgerald came under fire from across Dalai floor during leaders' questions over the situation with resulted from lack of emergency hotel accommodation for the families, some of whom were forced to sleep to sleep rough as a result. Sleep rough in Ireland means to sleep outside. Fine Fail's 
Barry Cohen said that promises made through, I can't even read that, Edna Kennedy two years ago, that the, no family should be left stranded by local authorities have been broken. The situation is bad enough. Unfortunately, Tuesday has brought an extremely worrying turning point. Hundreds of phone calls were made by Focus Ireland to, be, to bed and breakfast accommodations and hotels, the, the family, on Tuesday night, he said. For them, however, there was no room in the inn. Some of the families ended up sleeping rough th that night. Mike Allen focuses Ireland has said that what happened on Tuesday is un unprecedented sh and shocking. So this is a, there are 183,000 vacant homes across the state. I'm going to say that again. There are 183,000 vacant homes across the state. 40,000 in Dublin alone. That is 24 vacations home for every single adult child in emergency co uh, accommodation that Edna Kennedy's legacy had, he added. 183,000 vacant homes across the state. I have to read this a few times because I don't even believe what the hell I'm reading here. I don't know where things have gone to. I don't know where things have turned. And 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 yeah, things are not going. Uh, things are not going good. I want to read this part here. After six years in office, Edna Kennedy's uh, record speaks for itself. According to the CSO, the 2011, there were 641 homeless children. But last month, 2,563 children slept in emergency accommodation funded by the Department of Housing, Planning, Community, and Local Government. That is 300% increase, he said. I'm just speechless right now. Speechless right now. I'm going to move on here. Rise in annual house prices in Scotland. Scotland. So someone from... Um, the last article that I read about Ireland, a friend of mine from Belfast sent me that article. He wanted me to read it to you guys because it's really good. So that was a good article. Thanks for sending that to me. That was from uh, my friend Mark Fitzpatrick there in Belfast. Rise in annual house prices in Scotland. So someone sent me this from Scotland today too. Asked me to read it in my show and I said no problem. Look at all those for sale signs. Does that remind you of 2007, 2008 in the United States? If anyone um, remembers that. The average UK house price fell by 0.6% in March compared to February 2017, according to new figures. The UK uh, house price index data for March reveals that despite the month-to-month -month dip in annual prices, Increase 4.4%, taking the overall average UK property value to £232,000. In Scotland, monthly figures fell by 1%, taking the average price to 137139 However, annual prices rose by 0.7%. The largest year-on-year -year rise was experienced in the Orkney Islands, increasing by 15.3% between March 2016 and March 2017 from £124,000 to £143,000. However, the Aberdeen experienced the largest fall, minus 6.3%. London prices rose 1.5%. The average property value is £471,000. However, monthly prices have fallen since February. So, house prices in Scotland going up. Now, I pulled this article last minute. And I kind of did a little bit of digging. Kind of looking around and kind of snooping around trying to figure things out. And I found something very interesting. Still in the United States, 41% of houses, 41% of living quarters, it could be condos, detached homes, townhomes, houses. So it's just like as a whole, 41% is still under $100,000 US. So 41% of the United States of America is still under $100,000 US. And that's, we're talking, we're not talking about trailers. We're, not, we're talking about 
condos, homes, detached homes, and townhouses. That's what they're referring to. 41% of the United States is still under uh, $100,000. New home prices are over fifty are over fifty percent higher in Canada than the United States of America. Wow, that is no surprise whatsoever. The price of new homes is quickly diverging in Canada and the U.S. Data from the Canadian Housing Mortgage Corporation (CMHC) show that new homes are selling for substantially more than the same last year. Meanwhile, the south of the border, the data of the U.S. Bureau of Census show that the new home prices are on the decline. This had led to a, an even wider gap between the average price of a new home in Canada and the U.S. Canadian new construction is higher. The price of a new home across Canada is up for the second month in a row. The average sale price in April uh, Canada was 751 large, U.S. 559. This, represent, this represents an 11% increase from the same time last year when measured in Canadian dollars. When compared to U.S. dollars, the increase drops much more conservative 2.64%. Even after factoring the loonies decrease uh, buying power in Canada, new home prices still climbed. Look at that. Look at that, 2007, 2008, right here. I still remember when the average, the average three-bedroom condo in Miami was went averaged before, before this whole fiasco in 2007. Three-bedroom condo was like 90 grand, and then I remember when it went up to 140 grand. Everyone was like, "Holy crap!" And then boom, look at this, boom, 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 boom. and then things started to pick up back again. But it looks like it's going to go back on a decline. Look at this. Look at Canada, eh? Just going up there, eh? Eh? New, U.S. new construction is lower. American new home builders aren't seeing such steep climbs in sale prices. Actually, they aren't seeing climbs at all. The average price of a new home in the U.S. was Canadian $495,271. Rep this represents 3% decline from the same time last year when measured in U.S. dollars. In Canadian dollars, this was a 0.49% decline from the same time last year. Both forms of measurement show decline, declining home prices in the U.S., curious, sin, um, curious since their economy is in a much better state than Canada right now. Now, you're probably wondering, but Mike, it's like $368,000 for the average home in America. Why are you telling us that there's um, homes, like 41% of America still under 100 k um, I'll tell you why. It's because it's the coast and New York that's skyrocketing the prices. It's the coast. It's Seattle, Oregon, California. And those ridiculous house prices, it's pushing up the average in America. So instead of going to Louisiana and buying a house for 90 grand – which is, you know, you could do, or if you're somewhere, let's say in Kansas City, and you buy a house for 85,000 bucks, it still pushes up the whole average across the board. It's the coast and New York that's pushing up everything and making it seem like the average house in the U.S. is 368,000. <sighs> so let's see what we got here. It's not the race or nationality of the buyers that is the issue. It's the destabilization of local real estate when foreign money floods local markets. Please don't comment about different races slash religions. So very true. Um, like I said in many articles before, that if I was in China, for example, and I was some big time hotshot uh, businessman, and I'm starting to see my country's not doing well or starting to see that, you know, things are going right, I would want to take my money out of the country and put it somewhere safer too myself, right? I mean, you got to think outside the box or think, you know, maybe maybe China needs to fix some problems it has or change the way it's doing things so its wealth doesn't leave the country. Because do you think the Chinese government wants wealth to leave its own country? Because China is going to go bankrupt. If everyone takes all their money out of the out of China, there's going to be a huge runoff 
in the markets there. There's going to be a huge bank runoff. People are going to be pulling their money out, and it's going to be an absolute disaster. So you got to see that point of view too. China doesn't want to go bankrupt because of because of people um, exporting their 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 wealth. You know what I'm saying? New home prices. Okay, so I read that one. Goodbye. Now this is an interesting one. Speaking of China, seven seventy percent of China's millennials are homeowners. Canadians and Americans are not so lucky. Buying a home is tough as a millennial, but apparently not as hard if you're from China. This is according to HSBC study looking at global buying behavior of millennials. The survey looked at nine countries and found that rates were within a few points across the globe except China. 40% of millennials own their own homes. The rate of global millennial homeownership is 40%, a little higher than I expected. Leading the pack are the Chinese, where 70% own their home. That's huge, because it was 1.5, 1.85 billion people in China. I'm not sure exactly, but but that's that's really good. That's not a huge surprise, since the country's national average homeownership is a whopping 90%. The U.S. and Canada was somewhere in the middle, with 35 and 34%, respectively, and the the United um, the EU the United whatever, had the lowest rate of ownership uh, coming in just 26%. Millennials in China are almost um, twice as likely to own ho uh, a home than an average millennial in other eight countries. So here's the graph right here if you guys want to see it. So Mexico is there because a lot of home ownership in Mexico is old money. So it's a lot of homes that have been passed down by Grandparents, great grandparents, people that immigrated from Spain and Portugal when they went to Mexico back, like in the eighteen seventies. It's old, old money, old land. So a lot of people in Mexico do own their place because it's old money and it's, it's there for a long time. There's uh, China, then Mexico, then you got uh, France, Malaysia, the United States, Canada, United Kingdom, Australia. Wow, twenty percent. It's so low. And the uh, the EU majority of millennials overspent on their homes, on their houses. Millennial first-time buyers have the tendency to overspend, and it's a global trend. Over the past two years, fifty-six percent of global buyers surveyed said they went over budget. That's horrible. And if you lose your job, what happens? A massive seventy percent of U UAE buyers. Uh, went over their budget, followed by 68% of Malaysian buyers, Canada, and France were at least likely of the group. 42% and 41% of the buyers' budget, respectively. Only 50% survey uh, respondents had pr precise budgets, so it's easy to see why so many went over budget. Hard to stay within a number if you don't know what the number is. Tapping the bank of mom and dad. So, <sighs> so Steve is saying, uh, let's hope it doesn't crash, but rather a healthy correction. And then someone says, replies, the real, the real question is, what will happen when the retraction occurs of the economy and yet the debt needs to be paid? Canada's currency is already, I'm not going to say that on air because it's bad words as long as the as uh let's see what it is the sooner it happens the better and a lot of money in bc's dirty money and lower prices are good things well lower prices are good you know what happens is because then people start to uh living close to work people start being happy again because everyone's pissed off you go to vancouver everyone's mad Everyone's driving like an animal. Everyone's all over the place. I'm not saying, I'm just saying, like, when I, when I go down there, it's like, I don't even want to go there. You know what I'm saying? So, millennials who receive parental support for home ownership. Look at that. Look at Canada, UK, France.
the results of the survey shows that oh you know what this i think it stands for australia uae i've never seen that acronym before anyone know what you what is the uae ua i feel like such a moron oh united arab emirates okay Oh, I thought it was the EU. The I'm sorry, guys, for mis you know the articles there. You could read it yourself. I'm sorry about that. I just didn't know why they would include this in there. But capital is Dubai. Okay, Abu Dubai. Abu Dubai. Okay, let's close this. Everything Canadians should know about inflation is wrong. Here's why. Everyone's talking inflation, but how many Canadians know what it means? When the majority of people, including government officials, mentioned inflation they actually mean consumer price index while the consumer price index is a measure of price change over time the number of grossly underestimates the rise of true inflation if you've heard the government mention inflation and quote the number that's much lower than you're experiencing here's why so somebody asked me to explain or discuss this whole thing that's happening with the with inflation in Canada, here's the article. Everything Canadians need to know about inflation, and here's why. And it's a long article. I'm not going to read it now. It's showing you what it looks like, and it's recently new. When is, when's it from? I think it's from like a day or two ago. May 25th. Perfect. It's relevant enough to what's happening today. And um, I'm liking uh, the comments, guys. Um Just reading some of the comments here. Yeah, United Arab Emirates. Yeah, I just I don't know why they would add that with with all those other countries. It just kind of threw me off. Sorry about that, guys. Um, what do you guys think? Send me articles, please. Don't forget to send me articles when you have an article or something. Just go on. Um, go to the top of my YouTube channel. You'll see. Um, Instagram logo thingy or my Facebook fan page. My Facebook fan page is in Portuguese because I'm doing a lot of stuff and documentaries. I'm like the Michael Moore of the Portuguese language. I'm not kidding. Go to my fan page on Facebook. Go up to the top of my YouTube channel. Click on my fan page. You're going to look at it and say, what the? Really? This guy? What? <laughs> Anyways, so I'm like the Michael Moore of um, documentaries, but I make my own documentaries and f do all my stuff and stuff in my my green screening my chroma king all my stuff and i make good documentaries that have actually awakened a lot of people in portuguese africa brazil and all other places but you could leave me a message on my fan page it would auto reply in portuguese don't freak out okay just don't freak out also like i said instagram go to the top you'll see it i added it because a lot of people couldn't find my instagram because everybody um is basically um someone saying here michael moore is is so bad don't no no i'm saying i'm talking about documentary wise like going out and kind of putting things together and perspective and stuff and a lot of people that have seen my documentaries that are of portuguese american or portuguese canadian descent or people from brazil wherever have seen it and have said holy crap this guy really gets to the point really discusses what's happening in the banking system what's happening here what's happening that illegal loans uh to buy out african uh, african countries uh for pennies on the dollar you know what i'm saying but anyways guys i just want to thank you so much for joining me and taking the time to leave your comments and all this whole stuff and, and what's going on leave me an article if you, if you need an article to be read leave it for me i'll read it wednesday hump day wednesday hump day is wednesday hump day housing day we'll discuss more housing topics and what's going on thank you so much for watching Big hug to everybody and uh, have a great weekend and don't take in too much sun. Thanks for watching and goodbye.